find the volume of the solid bounded above by the paraboloid. Z is equal to 8 minus x squared minus 3y squared and bounded below by the hyperbolic paraboloid. Z is equal to x squared minus y squared. So since we know that it's being bounded above by our paraboloid here and bounded below by the hyperbolic paraboloid, we immediately know the z bounds. We can say that z is greater than or equal to x squared minus y squared, but less than or equal to the paraboloid 8 minus x squared minus 3y squared. So now we want to go ahead and consider the solid's projection into two dimensions. We want to find the x and y bounds. So since we know that this is a projection into R2, or into the xy plane, z is equal to 0. So we can equate our surfaces here. If I have x squared minus y squared is equal to 8 minus x squared minus 3y squared. And we'll simplify here by bringing everything to one side, all of our variables. I'll be left with a 2x squared plus 2y squared is equal to 8, which we can simplify here. If we divide both sides by 2, we are left with x squared plus y squared is equal to 4, which we recognize as a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 4. So if we go ahead and we sketch a quick picture of this region here. So we have our x and y axes, and we're thinking about our region of integration, a circle, a full circle, centered at the origin with a radius not of 4, shame on me, minus 1 on my test, a radius of 2. So you have x-intercepts and y-intercepts here at 2. Now looking at this, realize it's a full circle, and we think it's going to be easier to integrate to find the volume in polar coordinates. So thinking about our polar coordinates here, we can see the smallest radius would be at the origin, and the largest radius would be 2. So we can say that our r is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2, and since it's a full circle, theta is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2 pi. So we have the bounds for r and theta, and what we need to do now is convert the z bounds. So we want to rewrite those z bounds in terms of r and theta. So think about what we had. We have that z is greater than or equal to x squared minus y squared, less than or equal to 8 minus x squared minus 3y squared. So unfortunately here with our lower bound, we see that we have x squared minus y squared, so we can't immediately apply our radius formula. And the same thing with our upper bound here, we notice that we have a minus 3 coefficient on y. So we can't replace x squared plus y squared with r squared. We're going to need to use our conversion formulas. So we'll keep in mind that we know x is equal to the radius multiplied by cosine of theta, and that y is equal to r times sine of theta. So plugging those into our bounds, we now have r squared times cosine of theta squared minus r squared times sine of theta squared. So z is greater than or equal to this, and it's going to be less than or equal to 8 minus r squared cosine of theta squared minus 3r squared times sine of theta squared. And we are ready now to go ahead and set up that volume integral in cylindrical coordinates. So we of course know that the volume of our solid region D 
is the triple integral over that region D with integrand of 1 dV. And so here in cylindrical coordinates, we have the outer bounds are pi, uh, excuse me, are theta from 0 to 2 pi. The middle integral is with respect to the radius, so 0 to 2. And then the inner integral is with respect to z. So this is r squared cosine squared of theta minus r squared sine squared of theta. And the upper bound was 8 minus r squared cosine squared of theta minus 3r squared sine squared of theta. And our differential in cylindrical coordinates, r dz dr d theta. And we're ready to go. So let's make sure we have enough room. And we want to evaluate the inner integral. So here we have the integral from r squared cosine squared of theta minus r squared sine squared of theta to 8 minus r squared times cosine squared of theta minus 3r squared sine squared of theta and we I'll keep r on the outside here dz so when we integrate this is just a constant rule so this becomes r times z from r squared cosine squared of theta minus r squared sine squared of theta to 8 minus r squared cosine squared of theta minus 3 r squared sine squared of theta. And we're hoping that things will combine or cancel here. So we'll keep r on the outside. And so we have 8 minus r squared cosine squared of theta minus 3 r squared sine squared of theta. And we're subtracting our lower bound, which is r squared cosine squared of theta minus r squared sine squared of theta. And so now we'll go ahead and we'll distribute this negative through to both terms and then combine up our like terms. So we have r multiplied by 8 minus r squared times cosine squared of theta minus 3r squared sine squared of theta minus r squared cosine squared of theta plus r squared sine squared of theta. And we see like terms here. We have two cosines that we can combine and then our two sines that we can combine here. So this becomes r multiplied by 8 minus 2r squared times cosine squared of theta minus 2r squared sine squared of theta. Hooray! So we can see within or between these two trig functions, we have a greatest common factor of minus 2r squared. So if we pull that out, this is 8, or excuse me, r multiplied by 8 minus 2r squared times cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta. And we're so very grateful to see Pythagorean's identity. We know that whole thing goes to 1, leaving us with r multiplied by 8 minus 2r squared, which we can go ahead and rewrite as Distributing that r, we can rewrite this as 8r minus 2r cubed. And now we are ready to go ahead and evaluate the middle integral. So our middle integral is with respect to the radius. So this will be the integral from 0 to 2 of 8r minus 2r cubed dr. And so this integrates to 4r squared minus r to the fourth all over 2 
which we're ready to evaluate from 0 to 2. So this is equal to 4 times 2 squared, which is 4, minus 2 to the 4th, which is 16, divided by 2. And when we substitute 0 and everything goes away, so we are left with 16 minus 8, or 8. And then last but not least, we are ready to evaluate the outer integral. So our integral here with respect to theta. So we have the integral from 0 to 2 pi, 8 d theta, which is 8 times theta from 0 to 2 pi. So 8 multiplied by 2 pi minus 0 for a beautiful final answer of 16 pi, and this would be units cubed.